How do light bulbs work? By any standard, the invention of the light bulb was a real light bulb moment. And it didn't come a moment too soon, because although we'd known how to produce electricity through chemical reactions since 1800, and how to generate it mechanically since 1831, thanks to Michael Faraday, there weren't very many uses for the new force other than for impressing other Victorian scientists by using it to make sparks and flashes. Of course, the early electrical pioneers were bright, get it, enough to realise that you could use an electrical current to make a wire glow, and if you made a thin enough piece of wire with a high enough melting point, then it would glow white hot. This is because, in pretty much the simplest possible terms, the atoms in the metal release some light photons when their electrons become excited by the electrical current. The problem with using these glowing wires as a source of light became obvious after a couple of minutes, really. Exposed to the oxygen in the air, the metal would quickly oxidise and disintegrate. The light bulb was the solution, a see-through sleeve to protect the hot wire. Like many good ideas, it had many fathers. Indeed, the light bulb as we know it was invented pretty much simultaneously on both sides of the Atlantic in the 1870s by Joseph Swan, who was British, and by Thomas Edison, who wasn't. And the basic idea has barely changed since. The light bulb is made out of very thin glass and contains a wire filament made from a metal chosen to have a very high melting point, usually tungsten wound around into a coil pattern. Early light bulbs contained a partial vacuum. The space around the filament was emptied of most of the air, reducing the potential for an oxidising reaction to take place. More modern bulbs switched over to the use of an inert gas, that's one that doesn't react with the white hot element, for the same effect. The result is a bulb that could provide up to a thousand hours of light at the flick of a switch, and sometimes considerably more. One that was manufactured in 1883, just five years after the light bulb was invented, is still in daily use in the UK 130 years later. America claims another light bulb that's been switched on continuously for 109 years. But for all its ubiquity, the light bulb isn't what you'd call an advanced piece of kit. Even its name is a bit of a misnomer. We should probably call it the heat bulb, because over 90% of the energy it consumes is converted into heat. Visible light is really just a byproduct. It's why old fashioned light bulbs get so hot. Useful if you're making an incubation cage for some chickens, or trying to heat a student flat when your landlord has turned the gas off, but not really ideal. Which is why the humble light bulb has in fact become a threatened species in recent years. More modern compact fluorescent energy saving light bulbs are four times more efficient for producing the same amount of light, and the new generation of LED based lights are more frugal still. The production and sale of the old incandescent light bulb is now regulated in many countries, with believers in the old ways having to lay in stocks of bulbs for the future, like in the war. And it's not just in homes and schools and offices that the light bulb is running out of time. Mercedes recently launched a new car that doesn't have a single bulb in it. Every bit of illumination, including the headlights, is done by LEDs. That, in fact, was their big light bulb moment. Except, obviously, that it was LED. LED moment. Sounds a bit feeble, doesn't it? And what will cartoonists do if they can't draw a glowing light bulb over a boffin's head to indicate a good idea? LED moment. LED moment. Doesn't have quite the same ring to it, does it?